All right, just just set it down right over there. Yeah. I'm exhausted. You said it. Building all these applications is tough work. I don't know what I'm gonna do when they need to be stateful. You know, Kubernetes on Google Cloud Platform is a great way to host stateful applications with high availability. That would save me a ton of headaches. Sounds great. Let's jump into a demo and show you how quickly we can get this all set up. Let's start with an application running on GKE that requires state. A simple example would be the popular blogging platform, WordPress. So this is our WordPress architecture as represented by Kubernetes objects. We have two key pods, the WordPress pod, which runs a WordPress container, and a MariaDB pod, which runs the backend database. Both of these pods are controlled by deployments and replica sets, which can be scaled up. Kubernetes services give us a stable method of accessing these pods, no matter the count of replicas. The MariaDB pod is fronted by an internal service type cluster IP, while the WordPress pods are exposed to the public via an external service type load balancer. This is where we want to focus our demo today. Both of these pods require state. WordPress needs to store assets in its file system, and MariaDB stores post and user data. So we have a storage class that defines the type of persistent volume that each pod will get. In our case here, we will want to create a storage class for the regional persistent disk. Each pod will then have a persistent volume claim for their respective persistent volumes. Now let's take a look at how the world worked before regional persistent disks were available. Let's start with a single zone GKE cluster. In this case, we have GCE persistent disks scoped to a single zone mounted to the nodes where our pods are running. If there is any level of failure on these nodes, we're fortunate to have Kubernetes self-healing kick in. These pods will migrate to healthy available nodes, and the disk, due to persistent volume claims, we'll be able to migrate to the new nodes, retaining state for our pods. All is well. But this isn't everyone's setup. More and more, we're looking for reliability in our applications, which means we want to spread across multiple failure domains. So in GKE, customers are adopting regional clusters, which means the control plane is replicated across multiple zones, as are the nodes that the applications run on. In this demo, we will have nodes running in US West 1B and US West 1C. With a persistent disk scoped to a zone, we will run into issues to get the high availability we desire. If there is a zonal failure, pods will continue to migrate to a different zone with healthy nodes. But because the persistent disk is scoped to a single zone, the state cannot follow. Enter regional persistent disks. In this same scenario, we can now migrate the state to a different zone as it was being synchronously replicated by the regional PDs. Let's jump into the demo and see it in action. So here is our regional Google Kubernetes engine cluster. It's running in US West 1 with nodes in zones B and C. Let's use kube control to actually look at the pods, deployments, and service objects that comprise our WordPress application. So as you can see, we have one of each pod for WordPress and MariaDB, and we also have an external load balancer fronting the WordPress pod. So if we actually throw that into the browser, we'll see our WordPress blog, and it's titled Hello Take 5. We'll see that if we dive into the blog section, we actually have one blog post titled Nice Blog Take 5. And so we can see that our state is actually stored on the persistent volumes uh, mounted to the MariaDB and the WordPress pods. And we can actually use kube control to look at those objects as well. So we'll look at the persistent volumes, the persistent volume claims, and the specific storage class that defines the regional persistent disk. So we can see that our claims actually represent bounded persistent volumes. And if we actually dive into and describe our storage class, we'll see that we've created a very specific type for regional persistent disk. We'll see here defined in the parameters that we have replication uh, type regional persistent disk. We'll see that it's a persistent disk uh, standard and it's running in zones or it's replicated across zones US West 1B and US West 1C. So now, we will want to see the high availability in action with regional PDs by simulating a zonal failure. This script titled Big Red Button has a command at the end that will actually take out one of the zones where my nodes are running for this GKE cluster. So once I execute that script, the script will actually identify where both the MariaDB and the WordPress pods are running. So now we see the actual node that the pod is running on, and we see that that node is located in US West 1B. And so we are now going to simulate that failure in US West 1B. And we will have to answer yes to that prompt. And now we will perform a watch 
to see what actually happens with our pods when they are moved into the node running in US West 1C. Okay, and now we've actually sped through the uh, zonal failure uh, to see that our pods have successfully rescheduled from the node in US West 1B to the node in US West 1C. Now to see if state actually followed into the new zone, let's jump into our WordPress blog. So if we refresh the page, we actually see that our blog is still there with the same title. And let's look at that blog post. Nice blog take five is still present and nothing has changed about it. Great, so we can see how easy it is to use Google Kubernetes Engine to host stateful, highly available applications. Absolutely. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you'd like to get in contact with us, click on the link in the description.